Hello everyone and Merry Christmas to you. We just want to welcome you to the online Christmas Eve service of Journey Church. I'm Kyle Johnson and I'm the Adult Discipleship Pastor and this is our amazing youth pastor Carl Stein. And we just want to thank you so much for joining us tonight. Now we know that the year 2020 has brought anything but normal. And doing Christmas Eve service online is not normal, but we fully believe without a doubt that the Holy Spirit desires to move in our homes and in our hearts tonight. And we expect that what we get to do together this evening is not only going to be a, a powerful experience, but it's going to be a sweet time of worship as well. 2020 can't stop the true meaning of Christmas, and it can't stop the good news of the gospel. Tonight, we get to celebrate the greatest thing that's ever happened to us, the greatest gift that's ever been given. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him would not perish, but have eternal life. Yeah, the gift that we get to celebrate tonight together as a family is the miracle of Emmanuel, which means God with us. You see, friends, our God didn't just leave us down here in the dark, doomed to die. But the Christ child was born on a cold Bethlehem night to save us from our sins and to give us eternal life. And so uh, let us be filled with joy and hope and peace and love tonight. And as we turn our hearts towards worship, please uh, take a moment and remove any distractions that might be around you. Uh, the Christmas season can be so busy and so noisy, and we want to focus solely tonight on the amazing love of our God and on the birth of our Savior. Let's take a moment and begin in a word of prayer. God, we're so grateful and so thankful that we can celebrate this season and we can remember that Jesus came he was born here on this earth as a man like us uh, so that he could die and one day save us. Uh, bless our time together tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 23. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Luke chapter 2 verses 1 through 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was the governor of Syria, and while everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. She gave birth to her first birth, firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find the ba baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth. Peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. Manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, just as they had been told. 
Good evening, everybody. Happy Christmas Eve. We're so glad that you were able to join us. You know, Christmas is one of those times of year that we are reminded just how far God is willing to go to show us how much he loves us and how much he desires to be in a relationship. So much so that he sent his only son to earth as the, in the form of a baby to be with us. And hopefully that fills you with a sense of hope and with a sense of joy. And so I want to invite you wherever you are to join us as we worship our king this evening.
sing. Come adore on bended knee, Christ the Lord, the newborn King. Christmas. My name is Matt Larson, and I get the honor of being the lead pastor of Journey Church here in Kingman, Arizona. I want to thank you for the privilege of being allowed into your home to talk with you tonight about the amazing love of God. I want to thank our middle schoolers who read the Christmas story for us. They have set the stage. To say that the arrival of the Christ child on the earth was a big deal would be putting it mildly. Jesus' arrival was heralded by this celestial event, this star shining so brightly in the sky, it lit up the night. My favorite part of the Christmas story by far are the shepherds, because they entered that evening thinking it was just another normal, boring night outside Bethlehem. And suddenly this giant heavenly host of angels appeared. Were there a thousand of them? Were there 10,000 angels? And these angels are going crazy with joy because they're seeing the goodness of God. They, they're seeing what God's plan was. They're praising him. Jesus, God's son, had come. Our Savior had arrived. I promise you, the enemy of our souls was not celebrating this moment. He saw the arrival of the Christ child as an invasion. And this wasn't going to turn out very well for him at all. Let's look at our Christmas scripture tonight. We're in the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, a scripture we should all be getting pretty familiar with by now. Isaiah 9, starting in verse 6. For to us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness. From that time on and forever, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. What child is this? This king born in Bethlehem is none other than God's one and only son. Without a doubt, this was an invasion. Jesus, what a gift from God to the world. Jesus, what a gift to you and to me. Christmas is a holiday with more traditions surrounding it than any other holiday holiday by far. But the one tradition that is almost universal at Christmas is gift-giving. It's December 24th, and if you have kids, I'm guessing right now they're having a really hard time sitting still because they are this close to being able to open their presents and to discover what is going to be hiding in their stockings. Kids make Christmas time a magical experience. Kids, wouldn't it be neat tomorrow as you're going through your stocking to find that your stocking magically never ran out of presents? You keep reaching in, and you keep pulling out present after present. Bottomless presents and gifts. Wouldn't that be fun? Well, that's what it's like with Jesus. In Christ, we get bottomless blessings. Too many to count. Every time I stick my eyes down into the Bible, I pull out another one, and yet another one, and you turn the page, and here is another one. 
All December long, we've tried with our Advent devotionals and with our messages on Sunday mornings to highlight all of the blessings that become ours now that Christ has come. Isaiah tells us that Christ's arrival, it means that there's no more gloom for those who are in distress. It means those who are living in deep darkness have seen a great light. He tells us that God's family is growing because all of us are being adopted into it. Isaiah looks ahead and he, and he sees that coming for us, we're going to experience a reality where war is no more. And we're going to have a good government that is founded on righteousness and justice. And justice. But my favorite gift that we get from Christ is the forgiveness of sins. What a gift we have in Jesus. Am I right? Tonight, without taking our eyes off of the gift of Jesus, I want to draw our attention to the giver of this precious gift, God the Father. From the moment I first looked at this passage of Scripture, I have been captivated by the very last line. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. I've experienced some pretty powerful forces in my life. When I was a kid, I experienced the power of gravity when I would climb high up in a tree and then jump down. Gravity is more pow powerful than all of us. In California, I experienced the power of an earthquake, and I'll never forget the noise that night. It, it felt like a 747 was trying to land directly on the roof of my house. I've seen what comes in front of a tornado, and I've heard from the safety of my basement what a tornado can do as it passes by. But the most powerful physical force in our solar system is the sun. Did you know that our sun is 91 million miles away from the earth? Think about how hot it can get here in the summer. That heat has survived. It's kept, it stayed warm 91 million miles. And in the summer, it can still burn our skin. You want to talk about power. But there is a power, a force that makes the power of the sun wimpy. And it's the most powerful thing in the universe. And this thing that I'm talking about is the love of God. They say don't get in between a mama bear and her cubs. I say don't get in between a heavenly father and his sons and daughters. Zeal is our word of the day. Zeal means intense emotion that compels action. Another definition of zeal is an eager and ardent pursuit of something. Isaiah says, it's the zeal of the Lord Almighty that will accomplish this. The intense passion of our Heavenly Father would not be denied. And here's what I want you to understand this Christmas. God is jealous over you. He created you just the way you are, because he wanted to be in a relationship with you. He loves you. And he wants, above all else, your heart. And because he's jealous over you, he's also zealous for you. The arrival of Jesus shows us just how zealous God is for us. Becoming a dad helped my spiritual life like nothing else. Before I was a dad, I didn't know how a good father feels about his children. And now that God has blessed me with four kids of my own, I get it. I totally understand. I would do anything for my kids. And if they were in trouble, I would exhaust every resource that I have, and I would expend every ounce of strength and energy to try to help them. The two worst things that can happen to any parent are to have one of your kids kidnapped or to lose a child, the death of a child. When sin came into the world through Adam, both of those things happened to God. We were separated from God because of sin, and we were doomed to die because the wages of sin is death. This was the dark, gloomy existence that was humanity's reality for all of human history before tonight, the advent, the arrival of Christ. We, God's children, were slaves to sin. There was nothing we could do on our own to free ourselves. We were like flies caught in a spider's web. 
all we could do is hope for a miracle before we die. That's what the blessing that Isaiah listed that we looked at last Sunday. That's why it's so profound to me. Isaiah wrote, For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. God didn't send Jesus just to free us from slavery. He shattered the yoke. There's some violence in that. There's some holy anger in that. God hated what sin had done to his sons and daughters. And so again, he didn't just set us free. He demolished the power of sin forever for all who believe. Tonight, in just a few moments, we're going to light candles and we're going to sing beautiful lullabies. And we're going to worship our Lord in such beautiful and gentle ways. But it's so important that we don't miss what's behind Christmas. What's driving Christmas. The passion and the zeal of our Heavenly Father is so intense, so breathtaking, so inspiring that if we were able to wrap our minds completely around it and understand the implications of it, we would probably be knocked unconscious. The full truth of God's zeal for us would probably fell us like a tree. We would just drop. The real meaning of Christmas, the arrival of Jesus, shouts this unstoppable truth. You matter to God. He loves you. And there's nothing that he won't do to bring you home. The zeal of the Father, the passionate, unconditional love of the Father for you is what Christmas is all about. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Our goal tonight is for you to see the zeal that the Father has for you. To understand that God wants your heart. You don't have to get your act together before you can come to Him. He loves you just the way you are. And He knows you've got issues. That's why He sent Jesus. He knew that we needed to be rescued. And so before we light the candles, the worship team is going to come one more time and lead us in an amazing song that brings God's zeal for us to life. And it's a familiar song to many of you, and sing along. But most of all, focus on the words of the song and their meaning. I pray that you realize that this is God the Father's heart towards you, and that Jesus being born in Bethlehem is the proof. Merry Christmas.
Tonight, we are celebrating the incredible love of our Father in the matchless name of our Savior, Jesus. At this time in our worship together, we want to invite you to dim the lights in your home and to light candles, and then join in with us as we sing praises to the light that came into the darkness and defeated sin and death. And now we as followers of his are called to carry that light into a world that is still dark and still broken, that desperately needs the light of Jesus. So let us join together as a family in the candlelight and sing praises to our King.
Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas.